I do really like that you can, you know, grab the, the tape if you've been caught on surveillance, and the fact that you can now climb and, you know, use the mines, it gives a ton of new opportunities, and the climbing also lets you find good sniper spots. I do think that the overall plot got to be very confusing around 3 and 4, maybe even back with 2. I mean, I've heard people say that 2 takes place after 4, and then there are people that think it's just the straight line, you know, the chronological... I'm not, I'm not passing judgment on anyone. I have no idea how it's all supposed to fit together. I mean, I will say that I have noticed the similarity between, you know, the Curtains Down mission, I think that's what it's called, in um, Blood Money, and then, you know, in the third, once you've woken up, that clearly that was meant to be the same mission, even if there is a little bit to the names that doesn't perfectly match up. So I get that apparently after that mission he got shot, contract took place. The problem with that is I think it's at the end of 3. It seems like they've found out exactly who the mole was. They're like sending 47 out to take care of him. And in the fourth one it's we have to be careful, we don't know who this, this mole is. So the overall plot is a bit confusing after the first one. I like that the fourth one somewhat like the third one, the missions feel separate from one another. I mean, to an extent, there is an overall plot line to the fourth one, but really, only so far as that you run into several clones of, you know, the chameleon. Now, that's one thing. I mean, in all the trailers, you had that shot of them, you know, pointing their guns at each other, circling this large room, you know, and you think, oh, that's going to be an awesome duel between and then in the game there's just there's nothing like that the only thing there is is that facing off on the roof where he's using where he's using the same gun as you you know the hard bowler and you can just use your sniper to take him out yeah it was nice and you know somewhat epic with you know, him you know blowing up that charge and then you know you have to chase him up and there's just chaos everywhere you run past but it just wasn't that big I do like the concept of that mission with, you know, you have to take out the vice president because he wants to be the next president and he's hired a, a killer to take out the actual president. I, I like that. And I will say the very last level is also kind of cool where you can make him get up out of his own grave in the white suit and he just shoots everyone, no witnesses. You know, including that reporter that was gradually finding out about him. And then, apparently, at the very end, he's gone rogue. He's no longer working for the agency or for Diana. And I thought her plan was pretty cool with, you know, outsmarting both of you, making a um, wheelchair guy think that she was working for him, giving him 47. And then, in reality, they're just using that drug that makes you appear dead. That does bring up something that I've forgotten to mention earlier in this video. Smith. Agent Smith. CIA Agent Smith. I gotta say, I didn't particularly have a problem with him in the first one. Other than that, much like 47, I wanted him to put his pants on. I mean, neither of the times he appeared in that one were that bad. But then the second one, I mean, he appears like two or three times. Each time just bitching about, oh, I've gotten captured again and, you know, drinking and... I mean, I just, I hate when they take something that was good the first time they did it and just make a joke out of it. I mean, on that, the prostitute character. I mean, in the first one, you help her escape and all that, and then the second one, I mean, in the second one, I think you can even get away with killing her. Um, Mei Ling, that's her name, I think. I mean, you can find her, and she'll just be, oh, well, this is fine, you know. I mean, talk about screwing over a character. I mean, yes, she's a prostitute, but okay, moving on. I did, on the other hand, like Smith's appearance in the fourth one, you know, with the car and 47 just, you know, out of the car with him and gun to the head and, you know, we're not friends, dude. <clears throat> in the cool, calm, calculated way. And it made sense for him to deliver that speech about how, you know, he has to save America by taking out the vice president who's going to try to kill the president. I guess I'll throw in some thoughts about the movie as well. 
Could Henry Ian Cusick, if that's how you pronounce it, have been worse cast? I mean, I like the guy. I think he's awesome on Lost. But could he have sounded and looked any less Russian than he did? What the fuck was the deal with his scene anyway? He was just talking about guns and saying everything wrong, attributing the wrong qualities to the wrong guns and all that. What the hell was the point? Are we supposed to care if he's a good gun runner or not, if he's smart one. I will say I kind of did like near the end where you suddenly find out 47's disguised himself as one of those guards, you know, with the helmet so you couldn't see, or mask, whatever, you couldn't see that that was him. That took me by surprise, I'll admit that. I, you know, suddenly I realized, oh, we haven't seen him for a while when he took off the mask, you know. On the other hand, the knife fight, what the fuck? That's just, I mean, do I even need to list how many things are wrong with that? I mean, do, are we supposed to believe that they've got these long blades up their sleeves everywhere they go all the time? Am I supposed to believe that they're just going to be staying there pointing at each other and then he can just say, oh, okay, let's do this, I don't remember if he says with honor or whatever the fuck, and then they just, you know, go ahead and fight. And also, they're being different ones and them not being like clones. I mean, I'm sorry, that just completely fucks the whole thing over. If he's not a clone, that takes away all of the character of, of you know, being removed from this world and not being able to relate. Okay, so he's, you know, a runaway. You know, he, as a child, he ran away from home. Still, he had parents, he had a bit of a childhood, and I'm sorry, it takes away from the character in a way that just completely fucks over the overall concept. And also, I think we can all agree there was not enough fiber wiring in this movie. <clears throat> I mean, he did it like once. I didn't mind the rubber duck gag in itself, but it was extremely forced. I mean, the line, you know, this is to make sure you have some perspective or whatever the fuck he said. What the hell? That was... The elevator bit was, like, potentially cool, and did feel somewhat like a nod to, you know, blood money. And I will admit that the thing he had on the door as, like, a security system for his hotel room did somewhat make sense. I mean, I guess he should have something like that, you know, in case they do charge. That's it for this one. See you next time.